Hi all, I have a thoroughly entertaining and outrageous game of Simon Williams to show you. Simon Williams known as Ginger GM and he often plays in a very spicy way. So uh, if you like Ginger or you just like spicy chess, he's a great player to check out and his openings. In particular here, this game shows the Dutch defence. Uh, his opponent was the very, very strong grandmaster Radoslav Wojtaszek who's currently ranked 22. He's the Polish number one. Uh, so a really, really strong grandmaster. So d4 from Radoslav. And Simon Williams plays e6. Sometimes uh, this is interesting to avoid if you want to avoid, say, the Staunton Gambit. If you play f5 immediately, you might run into the Staunton Gambit. And it, it's also an invitation into the French defence if White plays e4. It's the way Botvinnik uh, actually used to play the Dutch with e6 first. We have knight f3, so not going into a French defence, but keeping it in d4 territory. And now we have the Dutch defence, f5, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, bishop e7, both sides castle, c4. So black has a nice grip on the e4 square, and also it's kind of dangerous this position in other ways in fact because this pawn has actually vacated f7 this diagonal can be used quite often by the queen coming to a very dangerous spot hitting an h h2 h2 and f2 are quite significant soft spots here as a result black has the convenience to to launch a sort of attack quite crudely but effectively quite often with the queen coming to h5 we have d6 for the moment Queen c2, and now a5, which shows an interest in dark square play and dark square control, trying to control uh, white a little bit more, stopping b4. We have knight c3, knight c6. b3 is played. Uh, here, if white plays e4, perhaps it's best for black to take with the pawn here, to let white take on e4. And this should be okay for black after e5. For example, this scenario is quite pleasant for black. Black can exchange off the dark square bishops, and actually uh, the a5 pawn is very, very nice to discourage b4 here if the knight goes to c5 later. Sometimes that's going to be useful. There's no problems for black there at all. Uh, so something to bear in mind, though, if you're playing the Dutch, I believe if knight takes e4, this is more committal, and I, I believe white would get a small edge here after bishop f6, bishop e3. White's actually doing a little bit better than if you kept the tension more with f takes. So anyway, b3, we have e5. So black's playing aggressively on the dark squares, and this is one of the major points of the Dutch classical to play this e5. We have now d takes e5, d takes e5, and you'll notice this bishop has now been liberated and it could actually hit the f2 soft spot quite easily as well now and these pawns look quite menacing and there's options of both f4 and e4 f4 is the more positional choice in a way because it would liberate this bishop across this diagonal which might be useful in conjunction with this kind of thing so it looks like there's very dangerous attacking schemes already in this position White gains a tempo hitting the queen, but the queen wants to go to e8 in any case. Uh, one slight downside, though, that white's picking up on here is this c7 pawn. It looks a little bit neglected. And with a5 not controlling the b5 square, it's an open invitation, it seems, for knight b5. Now, here is a point where bishop d8 could have been played to defend c7. And black actually should be okay here for example bishop b2 e4 knight g5 black has resources here like knight h5 and say queen c1 it's a roughly even position it's quite a dangerous uh, for white generally this position uh, there's still some potential for attack but in this position guess what simon williams played here instead of bishop d8 which is really dangerous for white. So if I give you five seconds to pause the video, what would you play here? Okay, a super aggressive move, queen h5. 
And in fact, um, this whole idea of offering c7, yeah, it's, it's very, very interesting. Uh, if you play white with the Grand Prix attack, sometimes you'll end up with pawns on e4 and f4 with, with ideas of f5. And in reverse, the bishop often hitting uh, the f7 soft spot. So these ideas are actually quite dangerous also in reverse for the Grand Prix attack players. So knight takes c7. So is the idea to actually move the rook here? In fact, uh, black may not have moved the rook. <laughs> black plays actually a fantastic move. Can you guess if I give you five seconds? Okay, just keeping a sort of positional in terms of peace activity activity perspective, f4, just offering the rook a brilliant idea, a very daring concept indeed. White did take on a8. Perhaps, you know, white could consider bailing out with knight d5, trying to take out some of the venom of black's position. And, uh, for example, this situation, it looks as though, if we get this variation, it looks as though this should be uh, advantageous to white potentially with best play, but uh, this, it's computers might play uh, that in a very solid manner. But he's not playing computer; he's playing a human, and um, white didn't see anything too much wrong with knight takes a8, a very strong human at that. So here, what is the problem here in particular? Well, basically. Black goes soft spot targeting, targeting the f2 soft spot. And there are numerous ideas now, some of them more crude than others. So, for example, knight g4, and then hitting h2 as well as f2. And also, of course, this knight could be lured away with things like knight d4 later. And, yeah, the soft spots could collapse, as well as this rook being quite useful on the f file. So there's some very dangerous ideas. Grand Prix attack players also... In reverse would think about you know bishop h3 first then knight g4 and then taking out f3 and then taking on g2 and then taking on h2 there's all sorts of grand attacking plans actually but black is a rook down here now white in this position finds it quite difficult here and actually plays rook d5 this is not the most optimal response uh, before we go into rook d5 if knight c7 fg uh, hg knight b4 hitting the queen this is actually really dangerous if you look at this white's kind of wasted time taking this rook uh, black's really hunting the soft spots and if white has to do something like this uh, there's a real melt meltdown of king safety queen h2 exploiting the pins knight threatening queen g1 and um that unpins the knight so that's pretty desperate though that's it's a desperate scenario when it's just crumbling and will be mated let's put the mate on the board for fun <laughs> so that's knight c7 g takes f4 uh might actually be uh, an interesting thing to investigate and it's a computer suggestion for defending the position actually it seems as though white might be able to uh be okay there or even better so that's interesting to investigate. Uh, rook f1. Uh, if we look at uh, move 15, sorry, e3, just to show the venom of the attack. Bishop g4, rook f1, knight b4. This position is super dangerous. You can see if white gets the queens off, it's um, at a huge uh, cost. Black's going to end up with a massive advantage. And uh, something like rook f1, just to show the attacking themes and potential. Knight d4 is a really nifty move here, uh, accelerating uh, things. After knight takes knight g4, threatening mate. And now if knight f3, there's rook takes f3, and it's all over. So uh, if taking, there's queen h2, checkmate. Otherwise, it's uh, really crumbling. After knight h2, that's checkmate. So some brutal ideas here exist behind the scenes. Uh, so the best might be in the computer suggestion, g takes f4, but uh, rook d5 was played. We see now knight b4, so very interesting, attacking the queen, gaining uh, an interesting tempo there. Uh, if knight takes d5, this would fall in with white's ideas. 
c takes hits the bishop on c5 and the knight if knight d4 queen takes this is actually going to end up better for white if white can weather the storm uh, it looks very very scary stuff but if white weathers the storm white should be okay with, with an advantage but anyway uh knight b4 great move we have now a very desperate move rook takes e5 so why not just move the queen here if the queen moves to b1 then knight b takes d5 leaves this knight for attacking purposes gaining another tempo with bishop f5 is interesting fg knight g4 all of black's pieces are hunting down soft spots here and for example e3 bishop e4 look at this party of attacking pieces all working really well together at full pelt every last piece of black is really going for it and say knight h4 knight takes f2 this position is just crumbling for white bishop d4 a nice tactical move trying to get that rook so if, uh, here or even better here now just going for the bishop and then this still gets the rook the rook is uh, awkwardly placed and will drop off the board so even though this knight's over here it's not really helped that much by the other knight black's doing very well there so anyway rook takes e5 was played but this just allows now black to win material knight takes c2 and here knight takes h5 with the rook attacked still a nasty pin on f2 here from that bishop uh, rook b1 f takes g3 h takes knight takes it's devastating there's uh either it's like knight takes e2 now we have rook b2 being played if knight c7 then bishop f5 this is really crushing as you might expect after knight d4 so black has a huge advantage there so uh, rook b2 was played and now uh, bishop f5 just protecting the knight and of course unveiling attack on this knight the game ended here so why did the game end here it looks like a crazy position doesn't it white's not doing very well here if bishop d2 as an example then knight takes e2 check and rook takes a8 a8 and you'll see that uh yeah black is material up here four minor pieces against three and a rook each uh alternatives knight c7 trying to get the knight out knight takes e2 just take on c1 this is desperate that can be taken and the knight coming back uh rook takes c2 that's a bit desperate you can just take that knight takes e2 check is m m most accurate to just pick up the c7 knight huge advantage for black uh so uh yeah it's it's all devastating king h2 taking here knight takes check check so getting a tempo getting that knight protected and then taking here huge uh material advantage for black so a really really nice stunner of a game a real beauty so one of simon williams uh immortal dutch defense games i hope you really enjoyed that and uh, there's a chessable interactive course to check out on that bit.ly link i'll briefly uh, show you uh, the basic structure of that course in a moment just to briefly mention now the short and sweet try it out check it out it's free you get a quick overview in just 19 core lines so you've got a lot of kingside attacking chances in balanced middle games. It's a great surprise weapon, super dynamic. And I'm surprised it doesn't tick super spicy, <laughs> like ginger spice. Okay, so uh, this was one of the real uh, model games against Radoslav Wojtaszek. Uh, he's also defeated Boris Gelfand and many others with this dangerous opening. So check that out on that bit.ly link. I'll put a link in the description to it. Thanks very much.